This world is notorious for showing a lack of compassion on anyone that is in need. Good examples of this are, let's say, if a married couple happens to pass homeless people while driving. And what is in their conversations about the homeless? You know, is it critical statements that they're making that the homeless are lazy, don't want to work? And, or is it compassion that flows out of their hearts and the result is helping the homeless? You know, I recall when I worked at a Christian bookstore back in my 20s, this lady came in and she was, you know, talking to me about, you know, she wanted to help this homeless person. And the homeless person was just telling her, you know, to get away from him. And he kept telling her that. So, you know, like I said, this world can be very critical toward anyone in need. But so many do so without understanding in place, without knowing the real situation that the homeless are dealing with. You know, you, you recall the movie Rambo, the first one, and how John Rambo was trying to find work, but he couldn't do it because of his, I believe it was post-traumatic stress syndrome. And so he would keep losing jobs because of the, the trauma that he experienced during war. So you can... If you would take time to understand those that are in need, like the homeless, and those trying to find work, you would get a better understanding of where they, why they are in such a predicament. But like I said, this world is notorious for showing a lack of compassion for anyone in need. And so I'm going to... One second. So basically in this video I want to show, you know, not from the world's standpoint, you know, because you know there's going to be a lack of compassion in this world. But when it dips into the church and how Christians act on a daily basis, that is where the real problem lies. And so you see anyone in need, and so anybody in church takes on the critical viewpoint of those of the world. And when you start seeing the church and the world look pretty much identical, that is when we have a problem. How are we going to be lights in such a dark world when we're just as dark as the world is? How are how is the world going to know that Jesus is the light of the world unless we're being his representatives on earth showing them in the world that you know, there's a better way. But, like I said, you see a lack of compassion also in, you know, the body of Christ. So, it's, this is going to take me into the first question I want to pose before everyone. What is God's command to those in need? Is he harsh with them? You know, you know, I'm just going to state this question first, and then I'm going to list the other questions. Question two. Before God gives, does he expect someone to have it all together? Question three. Does God agree that people should work to become financially successful? So does God take the critical standpoint that both believers in the world have together toward anyone in need? Does God think that if somebody's in need, it's their fault, they should have planned better? Or is it, the, is it the complete opposite, that God has compassion regardless? I mean, you don't see the latter with a lot of people. I mean, maybe there's some Christians that give, and to them I can amend them. But there's also a good many that are critical toward anyone in need. And so... They're quick to show somebody what they did wrong rather than 
try to help them out of compassion. And like I said, there is really no compassion in this world. And it's because, of course, the lack of love. Now, if the church has taken the position of love, then people wouldn't be critical. But that's the problems that we have. So this is leading me into this whole, you know, with ministries and before they will help somebody, uh, it seems like people have to have it all together. They have to fit certain criteria in order for a ministry to help them. Now, ministries, before they give, they have to view somebody's bank account. My question is why? Is it because they criticize according to the standards of the world? Is it based on the position of mistrust? Everyone is guilty who is in need and comes to them until proven worthy of their help. Is it because they show someone, is it their motive if somebody comes to them and is in need, that they show them how irresponsible they are by wanting to check their bank account and their information. They want to look for anything that is going to be incriminating. Anything that shows the ministry itself how irresponsible they are. And it seems like this is exactly what the world does, you know, before they will help somebody in need. You have to go through so many loops, you know, of expectations of other people in order to receive their approval. Now, a lot of these ministries are critical, and they, they are critical according to the standards of the world. Now, as you know, if you've watched my videos, you know exactly how the world behaves. You know, we have everyone that seems to be working out of the Adamic mindset. And if you're working out of the Adamic mindset, you're all about toiling. You're all about working hard to become financially successful. And you're going to take tidbits and tips in order to do this. You know, you want to become like what I call the ideal man. People that are rich. So the rich give tips to those that are not like them so that they can become like them. So all it does is gets the world to focus on money and to toil and to become financially successful. So since the world works out of this, then anybody that doesn't have what the ideal man says that they should or on the path of the ideal man, then they are going to criticize these people and try to get them on the path. And so it's like standing somebody in front of a black drape. You're going to see the person clearly. Or they put the people under a microscope and see where their flaws lie. You know, the world teaches people to become rich and successful. And if you are not, you have failed. If you lack something, you did wrong. Or you did something wrong, if you lack. And there is no mercy to the needy. Now, I want to get into each of the points that I have just made. And, and of course, I, I had already listed... You know that a lot of ministries are critical, like the world, according to the standards of the world. I did each of them. And so, in the point I made above, where I said ministries, before they give, they have to view the bank account. And I said that the first point was they are critical to the standards of the world. And I gave each of the points under, the, you know, being critical to the standards of the world. So if you need to... Um, please go back and re-watch. And so the second point I have made was they want to show somebody when they look at their bank account how irresponsible they are. They want to show them their mistakes 
and they want to criticize them for any enjoyment they may have. So let's say if they go through their bank account, what if this family, you know, is goes to a restaurant, you know, just to enjoy their self, you know, well, apparently according to the world that if these people are in need, then they shouldn't enjoy themselves. But the world is so quick to judge that, okay, if somebody's in need, they automatically think, well, they're, they're not working hard or, you know, whatever the deal is, they want to look for any discrepancy in the, 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 the person to see if they can find a basis on not helping. What it is, and then the other point that I've made under the title was, what do they base on their, their position of mistrust? Everyone is guilty until proven worthy of their help. They look for reasons not to help, like I just stated. Everyone who is in need did something wrong and is irresponsible. You know, they did something wrong financially, and so they want to look for any kind of proof of any kind of irresponsibility. You know, it seems like instead of taking the, the route of love, they want to take the route of those that are financially successful. So they want to learn all these tidbits they can so that they can become, you know, like the world. And then there is a contradiction because here they're trying to live for Christ, but then if they want to live for Christ, Jesus, you know, Jesus says that, you know, we cannot love the world. So where is the flaw in their thinking that they have not realized? You know, sometimes people have weights that they just can't carry. You know, and it takes understanding and empathy as Christians. You know, I recall one time when I had a car issue, you know, and my car needed to be repaired and the church helped me. It was a burden I couldn't carry. I would have never been able to work if it wasn't for the church's help. I needed a car to get to work. So the church didn't ask for my bank account. And, you know, the church that I went to didn't ask for a bank account. They knew who I was. And so they, they operated in compassion. Now, there, there may be a lot of people that have that issue, and so how many ministries out there will look at them and try to find any kind of proof that they were irresponsible with their money so that they can't help them? So meanwhile, the person is still have this burden on their shoulders that there is nothing that they can do to help. And so, I mean, what if somebody has you know, rent to pay. And so automatically, you know, people of the world will say, well, what did they do wrong in which they owe rent? Did they not work? So that's the first thing that comes into their minds. And unfortunately, it looks like that is the church's standpoint at first until they decide to get to that place to where they will, em you know, empathize and they will have understanding. But how many in ministries will sit down with you without, you know, the critical viewpoint, sit down and really put themselves into your place and understand where you're coming from. Not many will. So if somebody has rent that's due, it could be to a job loss. It could be to sickness. But are these ministries willing to take the time to listen to somebody and hear somebody out? Now, for many of these ministries and possibly churches, by what standards do you use to judge a person's need? Is it the standards of love, which is from God, or is it the ways of the world, the way the world does things, the way the world sees things? You know, the, the church itself is good at judging a person without compassion. And, I mean, how many times have you seen that personally? You know, if you were in need or you heard of somebody else was in need, they went to a church and the church denied them because, you know, they weren't doing what the church thought they were should, you know, should be doing. 
you know, they love money and they try to get others to, to become a replica of the ideal man. And, you know, that is exactly, you know, what the world does. And sadly, many church members do that as well. Do you base someone worthy of help if they made good financial decisions? So if you as a church or a ministry have that in mind, well then the question God can throw right back at us is, we didn't make good decisions before we knew God, but Jesus said that while we were sinners, he died for us. And I think that's in Romans chapter 6 verse 10. Now, with somebody that is coming to your ministry, you deem irresponsible, not smart, and not good stewards? Well, when have you been perfect in your life? When have you made mistakes in your own life that wasn't right? You know, God didn't doesn't give stipulations before giving. His love prompts giving. And I recall... You know, when I lost my job at an insurance company and I was staying with someone at church at the time and he told me that I had to leave. Well, I had to put all my stuff that was currently in his garage in the storage and I had no way to do it. I had no way to pay it. And so at that time, the church gathered an offering. I didn't know about it. And another brother that the church gave to didn't know about it. So we got in church, and the church gathered up an offering, and they gave it to him and I. And that was the money that I used to pay for my storage. And so, you know, even if I was irresponsible according to the ways the world does things, and the way the church thinks the world is okay with that, God helped me regardless. You know, that many of the other times that I was in need, that God had provided for me, and God didn't base that on the way the world does things. If God stood by the way the world does things, he would have never provided for me. He would have let me fall. But it says in scripture, you know, a righteous fall seven times and the Lord lifts him up. Or that's paraphrased. Now, church and ministries, stop using what you learn from this world as a basis to judge a need. Love should compel you to help. Your love should match God's. Now, read in scripture of, of how God met needs. And you know... There is the scriptures that I want to give that showed exactly how God is. Now, my question at the beginning is, you know, what is God's command to those in need? Is he harsh with them? Second question, before God gives, does he expect someone to have it all together? Question three, does God agree that people should work to become financially successful? Well, I'm going to read a few scriptures that will hopefully open your eyes to the fact of who God is. Does God stand with the world and their judging like so many of the church do? You know, the church is good for, you know, taking the side of the world and taking the principles that the world gives and want to judge. So I'm going to start by reading Leviticus chapter 19, verse 10. So in the book of Leviticus, God has a command for those that own fields. He says, Now when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap to the very corners of your field, nor shall you gather gleanings of your harvest, nor shall you glean your vineyard, nor shall you gather the fallen fruit of your vineyard. You should leave them for the needy and for the stranger. I am the Lord your God. Now the next scripture is, Proverbs 19.17 Okay, it says, One who is gracious to a poor man lends to the Lord, and he will repay him for his good deed. Okay, James 4.17 Therefore, to one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, to him it is sin. 
Okay, 1 John 3.17, But whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? The next example is about the sheep and the goats, which is in Matthew chapter 25, verse 31 to verse 46. And, you know, Jesus was talking about how, you know, the, the sheep were the righteous ones and the goats were the unrighteous. And so the king, Jesus said, turned to them, the sheep, and said... For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. And so the righteous asked him, When did we do these things? And Jesus said that, Truly I say to you, to the extent you did it to even one of these brothers of mine, even the least of them, you did it to me. And then he turned to the goats and said the complete opposite. Because the goats didn't do that. There's people in this world that have a lack of compassion on anybody that Jesus stated here about where we're supposed to have compassion. Jesus said, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. Well, what does the world's standpoint say to that? If you're hungry, then you need to get a job. And that's how the world is. And that's how the church is. You know, you see somebody in need, it's their fault. And so they're looking for any reason not to help them. And if you're doing so, you're taking the attitude and the position of the goats. Uh, let's see. I was a stranger and you invited me in. Today, no one's going to invite a stranger in, you know, because they're afraid of them. You know, which I can understand to a point. But... You know, it reminds me of Keith Green's song, When There's Love. You know, you know, check that out for yourself. It's such a good song. But, you know, love is the most important thing we need to have. Because love conquers all. Love pushes away darkness. Uh, let's say, if so, Jesus said, I was naked and you clothed me. Well, if somebody's naked, then once again, the world's going to tell them to get a job and buy some clothes. I was sick and you visited me. Well, what did you do wrong in which you're sick? And, you know, a lot of people will tend to to say, well, I was too busy and I couldn't visit you. I was too busy with work. I was too busy with my own life. And so Jesus said to the sheep, well, the sheep said to Jesus, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison? It did not take care of you. He will answer them. Truly I say to you, to the extent that you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. These will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So, this war, uh, th these churches and ministries want and think that the world is such a great examples of what to do with those that are in need. So they... The church takes on these tips that the world does toward those in need and not bother to help them. They take their opinions and they, you know, willingly criticize anybody that's in need. If somebody's in need, it's their fault. So they'll look through their bank account, find any discrepancy, and say, well, it looks like you messed up right here. I'm sorry, we can't help you because we think that you are irresponsible. You know, and I think about uh, another scripture I have listed is when after Jesus ascended and then the church actually began, it said that people sold their properties and put the money at the apostles' feet, and that money was distributed to anybody that was in need. There was no example of people coming up before the apostles and the apostles judging if the person was worth you know, giving money to, you know, and it seems like now that you have to go through so much paperwork and they got to review your bank account before they will even bother to help you. And they may not even help you at all. Well, 
with the example of the apostles, people gave and put the money at their feet, and the money was given to those that were in need. There was no stipulations. There was no, you know, red flags that they had. They just gave to those in need. And so you would expect that the people that were in need were very gracious, you know, and I'm sure none of them were entitled. They didn't have any entitlement. They were just gracious. And it reminds me of what Jesus said, that he who has been forgiven much, loves much. So when you forgive and you help those that are truly in need, and they have a huge burden on their back that you're releasing them from, they're going to be grateful. Jesus said in the last days, the love of many will grow cold. We want to make sure, church, that we're not becoming like the goats, because that is the exact example that the world has and their opinion toward anybody in need, toward all those examples that Jesus spoken of. And the church wants to be so much like the world. Well, if you want to be so much like the world, you're embracing those ideas of the world. And I stated at the beginning that, you know, any everybody that's in this world is working under the Adamic mindset, under toiling. And so, everyone wants to become like the ideal man. So, they're embracing all these financial laws that the world has. Well, if you're embracing the financial laws, then you're going to embrace the critical opinions those of the world has. And what it is now is the church are modern day Scrooges. You know, Scrooge didn't bother to lift a finger to help anybody that was in need. Instead, he, he was telling them that, that they needed to get a job. So, church, if you are actually taking these viewpoints in ministries, if you're actually doing this to people, then you really need to refocus and find out if you are operating in love or you're operating under the standards of the world. So, I'm going to end it here. Thank you for taking the time to watch, and God bless you.